Um, so hello again. Um, today's topic is Swing Transformers, a uh, hierarchical visual transformer using shifted windows. Uh, first, I will uh, briefly introduce the topic. Uh, I will talk about backbones and transformers, and we'll talk about the topic itself, Swing Transformer. So let's get started. Um, well, as most of you might already know that backbones are located closer to the row input in neural architectures, and they are mainly used for feature extraction in computer vision tasks. Famous and standard vision backbones are, you know, ResNet, VGGNet, and GoogleNet, and others. And as uh, you noticed, it, most of them are, all of them are, you know, uh, can convolutional neural networks based and one of the main questions of the authors of the paper is can we use transformers efficiently uh, as a backbone uh, architectures so uh, talking about transformers they come from uh, nlp there is a problem called alignment in machine translation so when we are translating one sequence of uh, tokens in one language into another sequence of tokens in another language, we want to understand uh, what token in the source corresponds to what token in the uh, target. But this is a hard attention problem and it's a combinatorially difficult. Uh, alternatively, we can do so soft attention and uh, for each token in the target sequence, we may uh, create a probability density over the tokens of the source sequence and uh, understand which uh, token attends more to what can uh, any other token in the target sequence and um, or we can do this self-attention too. So in short, what we are doing is uh, we are focusing on most relevant data and um, yeah, and uh, I should mention that soft attention is better than hard, hard attention because it is, uh, you know, continuous relaxation of it and we can solve it or we can learn it using back propagation. Uh, uh, this is how it is done. Um, so we are mainly uh, learning differentiable dictionary, which has, you know, queries, keys and values. And uh, on the left, you can see the um, uh, visual architecture of a basic transformer encoder. Mm. Oh, by the way, so Kushan, if you're, I, I, I didn't mention this, but you can raise a question to the audience and ask the audience to, to answer the question. And for audience like Darren's uh, and, uh, and someone maybe uh, Rofan Xiangling, so maybe Dr. Xiaoyan, you can also uh, raise more questions. For example, I think the attention is a very common concepts, but even if it's a common concepts, it is still evolved the discussion because right now, a lot of us haven't implemented the tensions by ourselves, which means that there are always some technical uh, technical confusion there, right? So maybe I raise mm -hmm. some questions to here and I will like anyone else would like to volunteer to answer. So my first question is that, mm -hmm. so QKV is a very common concept, right? So what mm -hmm. does this uh, square root D means? So anyone will try to answer the question. Uh, it, seems oh, cannot, it seems that I cannot, it seems that I cannot annotate yeah. it. Uh, so you mean this, right? Yes. So, um, well, it is a normalization term. Oh, um, no, I'm not asking you, you're asking the audience. Uh, 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 okay. is, anyone, is anyone try to volunteer to answer the question? Uh, it's the square root of the length mm. of the mm. sequence. And uh, why we need it here? Uh, because if without normalization, then this dot product QK transpose will be large if the sequence is long. Mm, so? We need to normalize them. What if we don't want to normalize them? A uh, long sequence will have large QK transpose. And what would happen if it is large? Mm, then I think the softmax vector will be distorted. And uh, what if the what is consequence of its distortion? Anyone Probably could probably a vanishing gradient or a gradient explosion. Yes. Yeah. 
So I think the, the, the main goal is here is that, I think both Rolf and, answer, and Xiaoling answer very good. So I think the ultimate goal here is that if we have these normalizations, it can avoid us from explosions and the gradient disappearance. Well, yeah. why the gradient is expo exploding? Because it's too long, right? It's too long, or what? It's, 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 if it is too long, and the, the gradients will actually be super large, right? Uh, what is what will be the gradient? You can you can calculate the gradient. The gradient is irrelevant to the Q times K transpose. And the larger the value of Q times K transpose, and and the more like the more the more likely it will be becomes a larger gradient. And if there is larger than the threshold, then then it will have a numeric over overflow. But uh, having a large QK does not mean the gradient of QK is large. The gradient weights. So here the tension, right? So you can calculate it. So if the Q and K, Q times Q times K transpose is super large, mm -hmm. and the gradients will also be very large. And also suppose Q and K is very very small. So which means that the gradients will be very very small. For example, when they put together, and there's a lot of a uh, based on the, the precision, and it's very, very small. Okay. Mm. Okay, so more details, you can refer to some materials. Yeah, but anyway, the normalization, the main goal of normalization here is to prevent the gradient explosion and the gradient uh, disappearing. All right. So maybe we can keep we can keep moving on. Uh, okay, great. So so far we've seen that uh, transformers uh, can somehow model the dependencies between uh, tokens in a seconds. But how do we apply it in Vision? Uh, one of the earliest um, applications of transformer in Vision uh, were came from uh, Facebook, as far as I remember, Vision Transformers VIT, and it's optimized version uh, DIT data efficient vision transformer. And what they do is, uh, you know, we need the seconds, right? What they, what they did is uh, to divide image into uh, smaller packs of 16 to 16 pixels. And, and now then treat every pack as a token of the seconds. Now we have a seconds of tokens. Now we can uh, apply uh, attention mechanism um, uh, with, with these tokens. Of course, they also concatenate position embeddings, position, position information. That's because uh, transformer encoder is um, permutation invariant. So, uh, yeah. Then, yeah, that was it with the background. Then let's uh, switch to trans, uh, swing transformer. Uh, Main motivations behind swing transformer is that existing transformer based uh, backbones are slow. Uh, as you can see on the left, there is a picture of very high resolution. And you know, I, I put uh, highlighted two tokens and they talk to each other. We have a lot of such small tokens and the operations like n squared in the number of pixels. Uh, another uh, problem with uh, transformer is that when we have tasks in which we need to you know, classify every pixel, the patches we are using too big for it. Uh, on the right, you can see you know, single token and, uh, and uh, you know, um, how every pixel is important. So um, some, some works, you know, uh, uh, work make a sentence work together with self-attention uh, to capture long distance dependencies because CNNs are bad in capturing long distance dependencies, but uh, still self-attention uh, is only uh, good at long uh, distance dependencies because um, uh, they are doing you know, uh, self-attention globally using uh, a little bit patches. So to overcome this kind of problems, they uh, offered several solutions and we'll see them next one by one. The first thing they uh, offered is a local self-attention in non-overlapping windows. What they do is uh, divide the image into small patches of four by four pixel region. 
And this would be a you know, 48 dimensional vector usually because we have three channels and um, a bilinear embedding uh, to project that every patch into C dimensional space. C is usually, uh, it's a consensus kind of, it is called capacity of the network. We'll talk about it later, but every patch is uh, projected into C dimensional space. Now it's a C dimensional vector. And what they do is apply, uh, do, they do not apply self attention globally. They divide image into windows of constant size and apply self attention within windows. Uh, so you can see the illustration of it. Um, we have we have window uh, uh, of size M to M, and they got you know seven. Uh, M is equal to seven in the paper, but I mean it's configurable. Uh, but the thing is, uh, the window size is constant, and therefore self attention will also use a you know, fixed number of operation, and that makes the wall self uh, attention mechanism in image linear with respect to the number of pixels. Uh, one more thing that should be mentioned here is that uh, they argue this is better than sliding windows because it is memory efficient. Memory access becomes efficient. That's because uh, in sliding window case, there are pixels do not share, you know, common case set. They do not share the same key set. On the right, you can see the illustration of it. Uh, patch A, patch B. I mean, token A and token B, B have different neighborhoods in sliding window case, and therefore they have different case sets. And, and that's, you know, that's also cache inefficient or unparallelizable. And yeah, I mean, memory inefficient. Yep. And the next thing they um, uh, offer is patch merging uh, to represent hier uh, hierarchical features to uh, model hierarchical feature maps as it's done in um, convolutional neural networks. What they do is, um, if you remember, we uh, project every patch into C-dimensional vector. And after applying attention mechanism, we have uh, C-dimensional another vector, right? Then what they do is they, um, they group patch, merge patch into, a, into one patch in the next layer of the, of the backbone. So we have like two by two neighboring patches, uh, which uh, consists of, which make you know, 4C dimensional vector after the concatenation. And uh, we project it into 2C vector, that is we downsample it. So uh, to illustrate this, I put the image here. So you can see um, after patch partition, we do linear embedding and uh, into C dimensional space. And after applying a uh, swing transformer, uh, now, uh, uh, yeah, now uh, after the first attention and block, we have like C dimensional tokens. And here we do patch merging. And after the patch merging, uh, we have like two C dimensional tokens and we apply to, uh, next layer of swing transformer. So that effectively. Um, models the hierarchical future maps of, of the neural network uh, of the given input. So uh, this, you know, there is still one problem. We, as, as, as we remember, transformers were good at capturing long distance relations, uh, long distance dependencies, but, uh, but we lost it because, you know, we are doing attention locally here, and we are only uh, now patches can tokens can attend other tokens if they are you know under one uh, other patch in high level. To overcome this issue, to you know somehow sorry, create connection. Sorry, 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 Kushit, I leave I leave the while. So maybe I want to clarify that. Sorry for uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I ask what do you have already mentioned because I just away a little bit. So. Um, so here, so so here is just a transformer, right? So, but I think, have you ever discussed about the non-swing transformer? It's still a transformer, but it's not a swing architecture. And how those, how does the model like this? Uh, non-swing transformer. Do you mean, uh, for example, the IT global? As a potential transformers. No, I mean, like I mean the transformer architecture applied on computer vision, but not 
yeah, I just mean the yeah vision transformer here. So mm -hmm. can you can we briefly go through this preliminary version there? Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. So so here, so when we use the transformers, we will need some token, right? So the to mm -hmm. each token is a patch. Am I right? Yep. Exactly. And, Yes, and here, how do they organize the sequence for tokens? So uh, they divide the image into parts of so 16 to 16 uh, mm -hmm. pixel regions. Yeah, by and... why, why this order? So we can read this by row, right? But we still can read it by column. Am uh, I right? Yeah. So here's a way for us to transform, trans, tra traverse these grades and why it is just using a row instead of using the column. Uh, well, one important thing uh, are you giving question to me or? I'm oh, giving question to you. Yeah, this is my question. Yeah. This question I don't know. Ah, okay. So uh, imagine we don't have position embeddings, then uh, we should mention that transformers are uh, permutation invariant. Since we, you know, we can uh, we can you know compute the uh, keys and values for each token in parallel, we do. It at, at the same time, in, you know, in contrast with recurrent neural networks, we process every token parallelly, and therefore it is permutation invariant. And transformer without explicit um, position information uh, treats every token in the same uh, in the same manner. Uh, in, in short, Re so really? it doesn't matter. So given a sequence like. For example, I, lo I love the environment of National University mm -hmm. Singapore, right? So each word mm -hmm. is token and I'll fit, in, and I'll fit this into the transformer. And mm -hmm. why the positions matters. If I switch the order saying that Singapore, National University of Singapore likes the environment of me or like, in, like I environment. So it's basically very different semantics already. Uh, well, there is still confusion. Let's say so. Mm -hmm. We have the you know query matrix, k matrix, and value matrix, and we also get the seconds. Uh, but uh, for tokens, but transformer encoder, you know, uh, not only permutation invariant, it is also permutation equivariant. It preserves the order we, we gave if we don't show the uh, positional encodings. In the I case, think the position matters, show... right? The position matters. So because the weights were linked to different positions, so which positions really matters, but also it will matters when the relations between two, maybe it will also capture the relative position of two tokens, right? Um, what I am arguing is that if you give mm -hmm. uh, so if you give the first token in the second case and at the last, you receive the same uh, you know result output for that token. But the if last, you also yeah, so I just yeah, I'm just so curious is that so if we have put into the sequence, right? Sorry, maybe you are using using a pad. Are you using a pad to do the presentation? Using iPad or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, yeah, right. So, so that's why I cannot annotate. So, for example, suppose we have a three times three, on uh, three times three uh, positions, and the mm -hmm. first one will have two distance, two way distance from the third one, right? Mm -hmm. But it will mm -hmm. have the so zero. I using I naming the grade position like zero zero, and the zero mm -hmm. one and uh, two zero. And the, from these images, the distance from the distance from zero zero to mm -hmm. zero two is same is the same to the distance from zero zero to two zero. Okay, uh, distance right? from here. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Distance but if we yeah, 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 exactly. But if we transform or if we convert this grading to a sequence, and their distance will be very different. And the zero zero, they still have a two way, two grades distance from zero zero and zero two, but it will mm -hmm. have maybe seven, right? So seven grade away from zero mm -hmm. zero to two zero. So visually, these two these two patches are the neighbors, but from mm -hmm. a sequence point of view, the one is a, one one grade is a neighbors, but the others is no longer is is neighbors. So does this matter in the transformer? No, if, if you don't give the explicit position information, uh, it doesn't matter. 
So it is basically, you know, uh, operation on a set or, you know, it, it just, you know, uh, you know, order equivariant. Mm. So, and okay. So let me ask the second questions. So why these position embeddings will be used since if there is no positions, it will be kind of good. But if we add positions, we manually including the distance. So uh, given, the, given architecture, we have patch mm -hmm. and a position embedding, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. with the patch, patch that is okay. But with position embeddings, will these position embeddings manually introduce additional distance between the, the patches or the grades? Uh, okay, uh, first of all, uh, position embeddings do not uh, capture the position in the like seconds, but they can capture the you know relative uh, distances in the image itself. Uh, so um, the thing is, position really matters. Position really matters even uh, for us, right? But trans the you know inductive bias of transformer is that um, tokens do not differ from each other. Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. If we don't give the explicit information about position, uh, a transformer treats every token similarly. Mm. Um, all right, all right. Okay, thank you. So maybe I need to clarify. So this point, uh, the, at this point, is there any questions? I think a uh, coach should have a perfect answers for all my questions. So is there any additional questions for the fusion transformer? Oh, uh, I just have a confusion. So why does transformer does not know the positions? Mm, maybe I'm trying to answer these questions. <laughs> COVID, maybe you can correct me if I'm not correct. So transformer, if you if we use attention techniques, uh, we will have uh, we have we have we have QKV right. Mm. The, we will calculate the QKV for every pair of the token, every pair of the tokens. But right. what, what is the dimension of Q? Dimension of Q is n. The, I, yeah, maybe the I think maybe the pixel number in each grade or each token. Uh, here. What what is the dimension of Q KV? Dimension is oh. I, I'm not sure. Maybe COVID can 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 suggest. Yeah. yeah. The, the dimension of hmm. the dimension of n times d, right? And because the, the, this is the, this is a natural language, or this is a vision transformer. Uh, it, it works with vision too. It works for vision too. Okay, so if there are pixel given a patch, let's say the patch is m times m, and what is uh, dimensionality as suggested by Rofan? What is the dimensionality of the Q? Uh, the, 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 it is m by d. So and what, and what is d? D is uh, the the you know, it is. I don't the, know. <laughs> no, no, no. It's the dimensionality of the uh, latent kind of latent space. It's like okay, it's latent. So if there's a latent space, which means that we still have a way of embedding, right? Oh. So given a patch, we say each patch is a token, and from the from if it is a small images, it always have a dimensionality, like m times m. All right, and mm. then we will have a transformer. So we somehow have embeddings to convert these embeddings into the dimensionality of D, am I right? Oh, my, my question is why transformer need, need the positional embedding? Because here, the first dimension of Q is N. N is- N is number of images, right? Yeah, yeah. so when you fit your input into the transformer, it inherently has a sequence has a position order, then why do I need an additional positional encoder? Uh, yeah, uh, the thing is, if you give your tokens in one particular order, the mm -hmm. output for this sequence would be on that order. That is transformer preserves the order, right? Yeah. But it, do, it does not consider the you know distances between, sec, uh, between tokens, it doesn't. It just gives the same matrix in a permutated way. In other words, you get a uh, matrix in a permutated way, uh, permutated matrix if you just permute. What do you mean by permutated? You mean the permutated? Uh, yeah, it, it, if you permute this sequence, 
you get the same output, but you know, permutated in the same way. Oh, yes, you're right. So as, that as long as the transformer is actually a minute to minute address, mm -hmm. it's going to address a minute to minute problem, minute to minute mapping problem, right? Yeah. That means giving an image, so we want to generate another image. So we can do this, give a sequence, generate another sequence. And the, yeah, so let's back to Rolfan's questions. Why do we need to have these position embeddings? Why do it really matters? Maybe we can first ask, ask the questions, why the position embedding matters in natural language processing? And Yufan, can you answer this question? Um, no? Typically, it will get a better performance. And uh, how, how to get a better performance? Why the position embeddings can help improve the uh, performance? Uh, I didn't remember. Didn't remember, right. but I, I know. Do you remember this? Yeah, I, I, I know when we use the LSTM or like transformer, we must encode the position. But I just forget, forget, forget. Jing Lian, do you do you remember that? Sorry. All right. So, Doctor Xiao and Xiang Ling, do you remember that why we need the positional embeddings? Uh, uh otherwise. Uh, for example, if a word uh, located in different position of a sentence, it could mm. uh, have different meaning, I guess. So. Yeah, but it's relative, right? So uh -huh. given a short tokens, like National University of Singapore, uh -huh. right? National and Singapore will have relative positions, but we say National University of Singapore is blah, 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 and or blah, blah, blah is relevant to <clears throat> National University of Singapore. So it is a relative positions matters, but may not saying that the, the global positions really matters or whether the global positions really matters. Hmm. Yeah, I think we if we want to understand the position embeddings for the, the vision, we somehow need to clarify why the position embeddings matters in natural language processing. Yep. And uh, uh, an, an answer for this. <laughs> <laughs> the position embedding is actually not just that we imagine the one, two, three, it's actually a cosine and a sine function. It was designed. Yeah, in, yeah, in but actually it keeps the partial order, right? Yeah, it's quite a... <laughs> I understand it. I think it does have a circle. It's a period functions, but it, but anyway, it's, it's, it preserved the partial order. Yes. So why does this kind of partial order matters? So position or, embeddings are, are, mm -hmm. are useful um, for mm -hmm. transformer to, you know, extract information from the older again. I mean, uh, the doctor to, to said- strengthen, uh, To strengthen, to strengthen the, yeah. to strengthen the, the, the position uh, meanings yeah. or semantics. Mm. The, the a doctor, I, I forgot, I'm sorry, I forgot their names. But, which uh, which the doctor? Doctor said, uh, doctor said correctly that, you know, that, uh, you know, having two different words, uh, same words in one sentence is a great example of it. One word may, uh, you know, for example, it may uh, show different thing and um, oh, you in mean one place and- The doctor is saying yeah, right, yeah, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, mm. so, so we humans, while getting such kind of sequences or hearing such kind of, or reading them, we somehow pay attention to the position of it. But transformers treat the tokens as a set, a sequence as a set. They just get the you know dependencies, pairwise dependencies, but they do not, they may preserve the order, but they do not pay attention to the order itself. For them to pay attention to the order, we should give the order explicit order information. Mm. Okay, so if that is the case, so let me go back to the previous question I'm gonna ask. Uh, so if we have the partial order or position embeddings, zero, zero will have a distance of two from zero, two, but it will have a distance of seven to zero, uh, zero uh, uh, two, zero, right? No. Uh, so if we convert this grade, this mm. grade into a sequence of tokens, mm. so 
given the partial, if we have the partial order, have the position embeddings, the first, uh, the first tokens and then the second token, uh, so the first token and then the third tokens in the sequence should have semantically should have the similar distance of the first tokens and the seventh tokens. Just if we're using coordinator, it's a zero zero to zero two and a zero zero to two zero, right? Mm -hmm. So if we have converted into the sequence and they will have dif different distance. Oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, oh. You, got, you got my point. So in this case, uh, whether these position embeddings will introduce kind of bias because we have a partial orders and uh, in this case, the initial distance is kind of different and whether it will introduce an additional, I don't know, especially the images are super large and uh, even uh, images we can have maybe 100 times 100 grids, right? So the distance will be even longer. But I think the distance is in a side click, it's in a side click. Okay. Yes, it will in a cyclic, but the cyclic or periodic uh, mm. functions does not address this problem in a fundamental way. Uh, sorry, what's the problem? The problem is that the semantically neighbors will not, will not be preserved if we have converted the grid into a sequence. Semantic neighbors. Yeah, semantic neighbors is that zero zero to zero two and mm. zero zero to two zero are of the similar distance in the image. But when we've converted into the, the sequence and their distance became one of them one of the distance becomes larger. Mm. And what does that really matter? Or it doesn't include any bias. Especially we have the position embedding here. Oh, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I just raised these questions and the could should any have any, any, any answer for that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, for example, okay. mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we, we seen transformer also uh, talks about like relative position bias. And instead of uh, it, they somehow aggregate to, you know, di distances within two, uh, you know, coordinates. Like they somehow aggregate two, dis uh, two coordinates to come up with the uh, distance. Uh, but I'm not sure, I, I haven't read that about it. Yeah, maybe we need to have the further discussion. I just raised these questions, no worry. Mm -hmm. And let's keep moving on. Yeah, so this is traditional vision transformers. So, sorry, so I think I think here, given our group of people and we have no, we, we don't have many experts in the vision transformer. So I have to ask very basic questions. So maybe you need to forget, forgive me about that. Maybe let's move to on that. So, and what is the challenges? What, what is the technical challenges? Why we have we need a trans we, we need a swim transformer. Oh, by the way, let me ask my the last questions. So, if we using the vision transformers, it allow us to because given the trans the, the, the natural language transformers, it allow us to do the classification. But usually, the transformer is a generative model. And how these vision transformer is used in the computer vision in some generative task. Uh, hello? Yep. Or maybe I repeated the question. The question is that on um, what is the generative task to be supported by transformer in computer vision tasks? What is in computer vision area? Mm, I think here, uh, the vision transformer is only designed for classification, right? Uh, really? Uh, yeah. we, we, should we go to the previous question, previous slide? Should, should, yeah, so, all right. Yeah. So it's it just used for classification, I see. Mm -hmm. So there's no generative task for transformer. Mm. Mm. But it's possible, it's still possible, right? So suppose we are trying to learn autoencoder, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So we can use this, you, you, we can use this architecture to, to learn the representative vector. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah transformer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. 
Yeah, if you want to do generated test, you can add the decoder. Mm. So for as, as far as we, as far as you know, Kushit, you have to know any generative task based on this vision transformer. Uh, I don't know, but you know, there is similar thing. Uh, mm. the, while they do pre-training on uh, swing transformer backbone, they do it, you know, using self-supervised technique, right? Uh, they, mm. they put decoder and uh, so since yeah. it can do so yeah, yeah I, I agree with you uh, my, my, my last questions on these mm -hmm. slides uh, sorry this is a real last mm -hmm. question so uh, for traditional convolution right so mm -hmm. I think the strength of this transformer allows us to calculate the relationship between every pair of the tokens or every pair of patch am I right mm -hmm. um, so if we want, if we really want to do this, we can just use a self attention, uh, self att self attention convolution layer. We can achieve the same goal. And what is the fundamental difference, or what is the advantages of vision transformer over self attention convolution network? From my point of view, for the self attention based convolution layers, it will have a pyramid structure. So we have an we can have from the graph a very high level, uh, very high level convolution, and gradually narrow down to the small convolution, which have layered pyramid structure. But this transformer for me looks to me that, uh, of course, it can capture the, the relationship of two grades. But what if we want to capture the relationship from a more higher level? For example, we so if we it somehow be it somehow have a way to restrain us of the predefined granularity. For example, the, those, those tokens, the size of which tokens is predefined, right? So times three times three, five times five, hundred times hundred, it needs to be predefined. But for uh, convolution layers, we are able to start from the coarse grade and gradually zoom in or narrow down to the fine grain or maybe we start from the fine grain and finally using a convolution to describe the high level structures. And what, anyway, so I think it's a long question. In short, what is advantages of vision transformer over self-attention convolution layer or convolution network? Uh, hello? Um, yeah, I, I think everybody. Uh, yeah, so that. yeah, um, and just raise your questions. Maybe you can the first one to answer. And we're here, so no pressures. So we just want to, <laughs> there's no pressures if you don't know. That's totally okay because you are, you are, you are the one who read the papers, right? But before that, yeah. you, you also have maybe little knowledge on that. So we're just to have a discussion. That's why we don't just look at the paper. And we, that's why we group here to discuss something substantial. So here, my question is, what, why transformer, why vision transformer is proposed and it becomes maybe, it's almost like, a, looks to me like the future, right? But how this network architecture can outperform or have the fundamental advantages over self-attention convolution network? So if you don't have a question, that is totally fine. We can just move on. Uh, one of the things, uh, I mean, convolution together is self-attention, uh, as you can see on the right. I mean, this was the thing we were talking about. Um, mm. I mean, two different tokens do not share the same neighborhood and therefore have different case sets. And that makes the network very slow. Uh, you, mean just for, now, you mean just for efficiency? Yeah. And uh, yes, so the, the sliding window, which means that the sliding window in convolution network. Yeah. So it will be very, very slow. Uh, yeah, because, because you cannot, you know, uh, for example, we cannot do it. We can do it in parallel, but it would be, you know, very memory. Uh, it would be uncomfortable for memory access. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you, you're right. So. So it seems that it just seemed to me that the the patch stuff use less looking to less overlapping sliding window, 
it is still kind of a sliding window, but it's like the, the stride hmm. it yeah, applies yeah. just the, the, is the width of the the window, right? Not like just the convolution layers. We can just uh, we have slide window size and just we, the stride just move half uh, the, half the window oh, width. Or, mm. It is a bit different than convolution neural mm -hmm. networks convolution operation because for this token we have you know this window mm -hmm. and. For this token, we have this window, right? So mm -hmm. the position of window with respect to path is different, but in convolution neural networks, it is not the same. Uh, I mean, the the relative position of window for each token is the same. I didn't get your point. So what what is difference? And you are still talking about the efficiency boost, right? No, I mean, uh, the, the attention operation is different than convolution operation. Yeah, definitely, because it has been transformed. So this each grid or each token has been transformed in, in, in somewhere else, right? But we are asking the fundamental difference or the fundamental advantages of vision transformer over self-attention and convolution network. Uh, actually, I think vision transformer did not surpass the performance of convolutional neural network. But mm. now with vision transformer, it can perform mm. better than convolutional network. But actually, vision transformer borrowed the idea from convolutional network by introducing this kind of sliding window. But mm. this sliding window is only used to define the patches. It's not for computing the uh, convolutional filter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so the conclusion or the observation, the fact is that the swing transformer has surpassed all existing self-attention convolution layer. Am I understand correctly? Uh, kind of. Okay. Oh. So, and 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 why and what is the pivotal uh, fact to support the performance boost? Oh, I think Christian has some slides on that. Okay, so, mm. uh, so uh, mm. sh should I continue presenting? Yeah, yeah, you can please continue presenting. So I, sorry, I keep asking, but I not mean to inter interrupt. I try to digest, and maybe I'm. I think I may ask a question. The other students may also have. Yeah, but they are so, maybe uh, too shy to ask. Okay, please. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, First, I, uh, we talked about the motivations of twin swing transformers. And mm -hmm. uh, the first motivation was that existing transformer architectures were slow, not scalable, because mm -hmm. high resolution images would have a high number of tokens, and therefore, uh, and they are like uh, uh, n squared in the number of pixels. And the other hand, their patches are big, 16 to 16 images, uh, pixels, and they're, they're not uh, good for tasks such as you know image segmentation where we have to classify every pixel and they they uh, introduce several techniques to overcome these issues one of them is uh, local self attention uh, they introduce another grid other than the patch grid and they do uh, the self attention in in windows of uh, this kind uh, um, so uh, yeah, you can see that a uh, red grid is the grid of windows, and we do self-attention within a window, um, and we treat every patch as a token for self-attention. Uh, so yeah, every token is uh, projected into C-dimensional space, and now every token is a C-dimensional vector. And since the uh, size of a window is constant, the operations for a single head attention is linear. The size of window is constant. Uh, uh, so whatever... It, uh, so whatever the yeah. the the resolution of the images, the the size window is always fixed. Yeah. Okay. So is this about the ratio, right? So we have have yeah. to project the high dimensional images to some fixed image dimensions, and so we have the constant window size. Okay. Mm. Well, uh, well, the thing is, if the resolution is big, we have more windows. Let's say. Mm. Okay, we have more windows. All yes. right. Mm. And inside the window, we have a lot of tokens, right? And each token uh, yeah. is basically a C-dimensional vector. All right. Yeah, and uh, 
uh, the number of tokens within window is again fixed and therefore we have linear uh, linear sets in transformer because mm -hmm. number of windows is linear in, uh, with respect to the number of pixels mm -hmm. um, yeah again that issue it is faster than sliding window because uh, pipes uh, pipes do not share self uh, uh, do not share the case that's in sliding window case yep and this is the second thing they are uh, kind of introduced. Uh, I mean, this is definitely copied from conclusion neural networks. I mean, the intuition at least is that. Uh, what they do is uh, they merge parts on lower layers um, when you, they are going to the next layer. Uh, uh, okay, so we have uh, start with small parts, four to four image region, and uh, we merge. Uh, two by two square of paths into one and projected into a smaller uh, dimension, dimensional space. So here at the beginning, we do part partitioning, then we do uh, uh, linear embedding into C dimensional uh, space. Every patch is a C dimensional vector. After applying a uh, swing transformer, we have uh, um, a, a, a tensor of this resolution with uh, tokens of size C. And here we do patch merging. And while, mer while we are merging four uh, patches, we have four C dimensional vector and we uh, you know, uh, project it into a two C dimensional um, space and we have a smaller vector. So we downsample effectively and we apply a transformer again. And this uh, this is done uh, in every uh, single. Uh, it seems uh, to me a little bit like this, a special way of self attention. Can mm -hmm. I think like this? So this still borrow the same idea of convolution, mm -hmm. right? If I understand correctly. Uh, so maybe yeah. I maybe I what well, I would like to digest. If you don't mind, I would like to digest the dimension <laughs> a little bit. So given mm -hmm. the images on, so after the partitions, why this, what is H over four times W over four over 40, 48? And how this uh, this is calculated? So every patch is four by four. Now we have, uh, we don't have pixels. Now we have patches, right? The image is like H by four. Okay, okay, I got uh, it, I got w it. By four. Yeah, yeah, I understand. 16 times three means 18. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So which means that we have on uh, those kind of patch, right? Mm -hmm. And for each patch, we refer to the linear embeddings. Mm -hmm. mm. So we, and uh, yeah, my question is, how do they calculate the relation between the patches? Where in this, where in this model architecture, they calculate the relationship between the patches? And for force the first block, or stage one, if I understand it correctly, it's going to calculate the, the, the relation or self attentions between each patch, in each patch, right? Uh, yeah, swing transformer block, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. for example, here. It's for uh, each patch. It, it, uh, this is for each window does the self attention. Uh, yeah, inside each window, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's more like the intra window relationship. And the stage two is more like the inter-window relationship. Uh, well, intra-window, uh, uh, well, I've not yet in that slide, but uh, currently we don't have intra-window relationships. We have mm. uh, within-window relationships, but okay. while you know merging the patches, we have a different window. So yeah, so we have a patch margin, right? Mm -hmm. So patch margin. Uh, so yeah. yeah. Last transformer block include all the mm. uh, previous patches together. Mm. Yeah, so I'm I'm trying to call it inter patch yeah. relation. Mm -hmm. or, mm. Mm. All right. But all yeah, right. for mm. example, but yeah, for example, this uh, window uh, contains like like four windows under the, under uh, mm. under level, right? So mm. there is still intra relation between those. But so, uh, yeah, the. Sorry, but does it the patch merging or the transformer block? I, I, I'm confused. 
So I mean the you mean the top one is the I mean the yeah, the it's very hard for it's very hard for us to annotate. But what what do you mean? What do you mean? Which which you I, mean? I mean I the the top the top one is a combine oh, of the four I mean block I mean four 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 yeah four patches in the below one so it is the uh, it is called the patch patch merging or it is done in transformer block. Uh, yeah, I, I got your confusion. The thing is, um, we merge the patch into one patch, right? Then, since we keep the window size fixed, a window on a high level contains all other windows on the lower level. Uh, uh, how to explain? Um, uh, windows with respect to image resolution gets bigger in, in other terms. Hmm. Yeah, I change. Yeah. I say the patch merging. What does the patch merging do? Uh, patch merging uh, here. We have uh, patches of this size, right? Uh, on one level, we have uh, this grid, but on the next level, we merge four patches. Uh, uh, let's say four patches into one. So on the next level, on the next layer of uh, backbone, uh, one patch represents the four patches on the previous level. And how many layer of such margin? Uh, we have four. So hmm. the four stages. All right. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, any questions? Hmm. Hey, Rofan, how do you compare this with convolution layer? Oh, because convolution layer also have hierarchical structure, hmm. continuously pulling. In similar way, right? Similar way, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Okay, let's keep going on. So, uh, but there is one problem. We lost that uh, long um, distance dependencies uh, between pixels and patches. Uh, even if we do that um, patch merging. And therefore they introduce another technique called shifted windows. In the consecutive uh, transformer blocks, they shift the grid for windows, that red grid. So uh, you can see the, on the illustration, we have uh, these windows and this window is moved uh, slightly uh, or M by, M by two, M by two in terms of coordinates. Uh, that effectively uh, captures the uh, intra-window relationships in consecutive uh, transformer blocks. Uh, so that, there is some problems though. Uh, first of all, we have now different number of windows per image uh, in, in consecutive uh, transformer blocks. And now we have uh, windows of different sizes. Uh, Oh, I'll, back, I'll go back to the previous slide. So the, the pro, this problem can be solved in two ways. One way is you know, padding is zeros, then we will have the, all of the windows of the same size, but uh, that we will still have you know, different window numbers in different transformer blocks. Uh, what they suggest is to use cyclic shifting. This is uh, like joining smaller windows into one full uh, window so that we have the same number of windows of the same size. Uh, here you can see uh, they moved uh, A uh, under uh, this, uh, this circle and move, so this region under, this region under, uh, under the, the output. So that now we have uh, the lower windows of the grid filled, uh, filled uh, with uh, other small, uh, windows. But then we should be careful. We should. We don't want you know uh, unrelated unrelated patches to attend to each other, and therefore we do masked uh, multi-head self attention or ma masked self attention. We effectively make some of the weights zero. 
so that different parts do not attend to each other. And uh, at the end, they do reverse cyclic shift. Um, yeah. And this is the uh, this is how you know consecutive to consecutive uh, transformer blocks look like. So they do apply uh, window uh, window self attention local self attention, and they they do apply shifted window self attention. Um, yep. I mean we can analyze it much more in a detailed way. If you want. Yes, we can ignore the details now. Mm. Uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, yep, and after this problem, we, they uh, suggest the last thing relative, called relative position bias. Again, uh, transformers are permutation invariant and we need explicit position information. And therefore they, uh, they use relative position bias. Uh, you know, it was cited from, uh, it was cited, it comes from other paper, but uh, I forgot to give the source, but yeah. What they do is uh, they, alter attention mechanism a bit and they include um, uh, position and encoding matrix, which is M squared by M squared, which captures the you know, relative distance between every pair of tokens. Yeah, yeah similar idea can also be applied in net language, right? Uh, okay. I, I guess, yes, I mean, yeah, th th mm. there, there is similar ideas in natural language processing, I guess. Um, yep, and this is the oral architecture. Uh, we have four, they, they introduced four different um, sizes. Uh, as, if you remember, we talked about C, which was, uh, which, which called, you know, um, the capacity of the neural network. Um, so every token is projected into C dimensional space. We can play with it to come up with larger net networks, but um, yeah. So the backbone consists of four stages. Uh, it, it is similar to other backbones like um, VGGNet. And they, it all, the authors argue that the, uh, the resolution of the uh, output is kind of same with the existing backbone architectures, uh, H over 32 by W over 32, so that it is easier to replace existing backbones. But uh, yes, uh, the another configuration is the number of transformer blocks at attention mechanisms within one swing transformer block, like right here, two, two, six, two, and this is uh, this is uh, swing tiny. Then there exists swing uh, small, swing big, and swing large. Yep, and. Uh, now comes the experiments and results. Um, uh, first experiments are done in image classification. Uh, I, I just grouped some of the uh, you know relevant statistics. Uh, for example, one uh, if we have the same image size, they basically show the good trade-off between speed, speed and accuracy. Uh, they are slightly slower than DIT small, but offer better performance. And uh, I'm they sorry, are, so here, what is the uh, full name of FROP? Uh, floating point operations. Okay, so it's still a kind of size, right? Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, they're showing uh, Swing Big gave us a uh, big and uh, better uh, accuracy than others. Uh, and experiments and results in object detection are done on uh, Microsoft Coco. And the first uh, experiment is trying different methods with two backbones. One is ResNet 50 and the, the other is Swing uh, Tiny. And Swing Tiny consistently outperforms ResNet by over three uh, average precision um, on average, but it is a bit slower as you can see, uh, like have small uh, FPS, but uh, anyway, outperforms. Um, uh, the another experiment. Oh, sorry, is can I to... see the table again? Mm -hmm. So, so it's somehow to. Um, 
so which means that with the backbone of rest the rest net 50 comparing to the swing tinies and the rest net 50 were actually faster or more efficient than swing tiny ResNet is faster, but Swing Tiny is uh, more accurate. performing better. Yeah. So the point of efficiency. So we, we once have a discussion that we told we were saying that the Swing Transformer is, is more efficient comparing to what tech technique or the just the normal vision transformer? Yeah, it, it mm -hmm. is considered faster than other vision transformers compared. All right. Yeah, I understand this table, this data, this statistics looks really good. Um, mm -hmm. So I just want to go back to the very previous questions and why the convolution layer, and by the way, Ruofan, mm -hmm. does ResNet 50 have the self-attention layer? No. It does not have self-attention layer. No. Mm -hmm. On it may I ask where the swing transformer is published? Uh, ICCV ICCV. Yeah. So last year, last year, I see. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, if I'm the reviewer, will somehow ask how could the swing transformer, because it all, we want to, we don't want to compare the transformer with uh, normal convolution yeah. layer, right? Yeah, yeah, there are other experiments. Oh, right, I see, I see, I see. Okay, please yeah. go on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the tables are, uh, I mean, feels weird for me. I mean, can we, for example, compare that way? Because uh, swing transformer is, is like always a bit larger than with net. Um, mm. it's, it's not that large. So, uh, but, okay. but very hard to say that if we have mm -hmm. maybe five, or ten percent of more, right? So comparing, mm -hmm. just let's use, let's see the the ATSS. Mm -hmm. It actually have um ten percent, mm -hmm. right? Close to ten percent of the more neurons and weights mm -hmm. than the ResNet fifty. So, which means that the expressiveness will be larger, and uh, it takes more time to train, or it take more time to pass. So, mm -hmm. isn't the parameters? the parameter numbers matters, right? So if we want to handle more parameters, definitely we can be slower, but given we have, we are more expressive, we it has more expressiveness, so we can achieve um, better training accuracy. So this is for training and testing accuracy. Yeah. Doesn't matter, right? So I think maybe for both train and, ten, train, train and test, it's for test, right? Uh, yeah, it's AP test. box for and test. Yeah. yeah, test. Mm. Yeah, but what if we, uh, add several more layers into the ResNet 50s so that we can have a fair comparison. I don't know, let's keep going on. Mm -hmm. So uh, the next experiment is uh, using cascade mask in a method with different um, backbones. We have DIT small ResNet, swing transformer on, on one comparison and swing transformer outperforms both and gives better FPS than uh, the ITS, uh, other transformer, right? Efficient transformer. And yeah, slower than uh, ResNet. Um, yeah, uh, X100, this should be ResNext probably, but I'm not sure. Um, I'm sorry for this, uh, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, the parameters, the nimble parameters kind of comparable. Yeah. It's somehow comparable, but just you can see, 18 millions, but comparing to the swing, swing tiny is actually almost close to 10% of more neurons than the, the, the day T, TS, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, but, but faster, like um, mm. faster for 50%. Yeah. Mm. Faster? Uh, yeah. Why yeah. is faster? Uh, it gives better like frames per second. Uh, yeah, I understand. Think, from the value, from the data, it is faster. And why it will be faster? Um, because, uh, I mean, as the, you know, swing transform, uh, transformers gets bigger, swing transformer overperforms because it is linear and the it is n squared. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 
So uh, the next, uh, I'm again not sure about this uh, comparison. This is uh, called system level uh, comparisons uh, with on our cocoa object detection. And again, twin transformer, our performance other with uh, uh, compared to others. But I, I, I honestly, I, I don't know what this uh, comparison is. It's like, I, I tried to read, but I couldn't find a brief introduction. Um, yep. Uh, should I switch to the next one? Mm. Oh, so still have the, they have different set, right? Which means that the system level comparison. Oh, is it because previously we only use Swin Transformer as backbone, but now we use it as a whole detection system. So it's called system level comparison. Mm, but why we need to do system level comparison? Uh, just want to test its performance in different scenarios. And uh, yeah, I think so. And here, what is mean by HTC plus plus? HTC plus mm. plus. Uh, I can show from the paper what is it. Uh, it has some big name. Mm. If you want, I can show the paper itself. Um, I think I think the explanation rough. I make sense. Uh, here, <laughs> uh, yeah, for system level comparison, we adopt improved HTC. Denoted as HTC plus plus with insta boot boost. Okay, let's move on um, to this. We'll, uh, do not yeah. let's not do not stack on this detail. Yeah, uh, and the the weirdest table here. I have two questions uh, for these two. They're comparing image segmentation on image to segmentation tasks uh, with different methods and backbones, and swing transformer outperforms others but using you know pre-training here i mean is it a valid comparison first of all and the other thing they're not uh, training other versions of dit only dit small not giving for example dit large or dit big they do not provide any justification right <clears throat> yeah, no no and so so your, your question is that it's unclear <clears throat> how the pre-train how the Swing tiny, small, big, large are uh, pre-trained, pre -pre -trend, right? Whether it is a fair comparison with ResNet yeah. 101. Hmm. Uh, I mean, is, is it a valid comparison com with others? I don't know. <laughs> if they are using the same training data set and the trend for a while, maybe it is fair comparison. Mm -hmm. If we want, if, if I'm the author, we'll try to provide similar kind of arguments. I'm saying that how they pre-train the ResNet, we, we pre-train the swing transformer the same way they pre-train the ResNet. But well, ResNet is not pre-train, right? If you look at the notes. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so they are not use pre-train ResNet? No. no. Mm -hmm. Only like three, three models here are mm -hmm. pre-trained. Pre-train using what task? Uh, image net yeah. yeah. Classification, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think this, ha I do have the same doubt as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, All right. this, is the this is the last table uh, I wanted to show. And this is the end of the presentation. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's a very great presentation. So I think you should fully digest all the details uh, discuss, despite we ha can have a lot to discuss. And uh, yeah, so I hope everyone can follow. And uh, is anyone have any questions to Kushit? And Kushit, oh. please keep the, the slide so that they have a question. Okay, okay. Mm. Uh, Kushit, uh, may yeah. I ask? So because when transformer use many, many things like cyclic shifts, relative position bias, but ComNet is not equipped with this kind of tricks. Do you think if we somehow uh, use some heavy tricks on combat, we will achieve better performance than swing transformer. Oh, well, 
So first of all, I prefer to not to have such kind of tricks. They, they introduce tricks to solve such kind, some kind of problems, not to optimize, right? Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, convolution neural networks are here like for 10 years and uh, transformers are like for two or three years. Um, and maybe transformers have more room for improvement than convolution neural networks. Uh, yeah. But I'm not sure if, if you can do some such kind of tricks. Uh, and, yeah. Yeah, I think Ruofan's more fundamental question is that in which part of the transformer is really can can really contribute the better performance than ConfNet, right? Uh, well, the fundamental difference is that ConfNet does basically pattern uh, pattern recognition uh, that you know pattern matching using filters, but mm. uh, this, this trans transformers do attention thing. Yeah, so so, so mean, here, yeah, just come back to my previous questions. Mm -hmm. What if we compare the transformer with self-attention and convolution layer, convolution network? And if I'm the reviewer, is still trying to, because going through all the tables, I didn't see a comparison between self-attention and convolution layers and, and, and the, 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 the swing transformers. I didn't see, see such a comparison. And just uh, the strengths, and the novelties of the transformer, I think definitely, even they compare, even it is just a comparable, com comparable, they have comparable performance. Transformer, the swing transformer still was be published because the idea is quite novel. It is trying to borrow the idea of transformer to address the computer vision problem. But since the strength is still capture the relations, capture the, the attentions. So we would like to compare apple with apple and orange with orange. So, yeah, if I'm the reviewer, I'm going to ask how does this compare with the self attention convolution layer? Um, we have I'm no question. Sure. Yeah, you have no question here. And uh, yeah, Rofan, please, you, you suppose you have another question? Uh, I, I don't have other questions. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so is anyone have the other questions? For Cushion, I think Cushion is now quite an expert in this area, so feel free and feel free to ask any question. Um, so I can ask questions too, right? Okay. Um, if I look at convolutional neural networks, their assumption, let's say, is that um, first of all they are trans translation invariant, right? If you move the objects, we we translation equivariant in, in other words so their assumption is a bit like hard i mean they do very strong assumption to to find the you know correct solutions correct neural networks right but i think it is not the same with self-attention um, uh, uh, sorry so the so what what is assumption what is a strong assumption uh, uh, convolution net neural networks have like translation equivariants. All operations preserve the, um, I would say, uh, if, if, if you move the object in image from one place to another place, the output, uh, we have like this kind of a similar uh, transformation on output space that preserves the all, all the results kind of. Yeah, the kind of invariance, yeah, yes, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, in that sense, uh, their assumption is like hard uh, because it narrows down the solution space, right? Maybe the, the difference uh, difference between atten self attention and convolution neural networks on that, but I'm I cannot express the you know uh, how to say assumptions of self attention. I'm yet to read about it, uh, but. Mm. I mean, if, if someone knows what kind of assumption transformers are doing about the solution, maybe we can find the difference, uh, fundamental mm -hmm. difference. Yeah, maybe we can have a more in detailed discussion on that. Mm -hmm. Yes, but anyway, I think it's a very good way to go. And uh, of course, I think it's very good. It's, I think it's a very good start. And uh, we're looking to the transformer and we will have comparisons. Transformer definitely be one of our baselines in the future. Mm -hmm. um yeah so maybe we, we can have a try to 
to, to run experiment with uh, self-attention convolution layers. Anyway, from my perspective, uh, I'm not sure whether you agree, Kushit, Rofan, or someone else. So it seems that the semantics or the semantics can still be largely captured by the self-attention layer, self-attention convolution layer. But mm -hmm. I, up until now, I haven't seen additional semantics the transformer can capture, but the self-attention layer cannot. Maybe I missed some things. Uh, but idea, but, 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 but idea, I, 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 please, you, 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 what did you want to, want to mention? Uh, what I wanted to mention is that, uh, look, uh, transformers have like one hop relationship in one block, right? Mm. Maybe if we add more stages, it, it can capture like more, more like n hop relationships if we have like n, n same transformer blocks. Yeah, we can. Oh. So for self self attention convolution layer, they have multiple self attentions to capture the relations in different granularity. That is also possible. Yeah, that is, and the relationships which are not pairwise, but you know, in, the relationship in can relation. be pairwise. The relationship uh, can mean, be pairwise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about relationships which are not pairwise, like uh, for a relationship between four pads, kind of. Stuff. So, mm. uh, so they have. You know, this is the similarity of uh, this uh, backbone with convolution neural networks because there was a paper about CNNs which said uh, if we have like n depths uh, convolution neural networks and n plus one depths convolution neural networks, solution uh, solution of the bigger one cannot be repeated by the smaller one. I mean, it is depth efficient uh, convolution neural networks. Uh, in that sense, I think swing transformers are also kind of depth sufficient. Um, the depth sufficient. Yeah. All right. Okay, so maybe you can keep further the discussions in the offline. But anyway, I think Kush should make a very excellent, very great presentations. And I think we should thank the speakers. And by, by the way, so before we close the sessions, is there any questions for Kush? Oh, oh, hi Kush, can I ask the last question? Do you think swing transformer is robust to adversarial attack? Oh. Um, I mean, uh, we talked about backbone, but not, not you know, as a method. But oh, they don't have a adversarial attack evaluation. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm not special sure to send that yet. I mean, uh, guys, I'm, I'm young. <laughs> So, <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me read the audit. <laughs> you should let, let push the grow a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so my, my answer is that I think the, as long as this is a neural network model, I think uh, the goal of swing transformer is not to improve the robustness of the, of the model. So I think it is as vulnerable as convolution network. I think it's even more vulnerable than mm -hmm. convolution neural net. Because once the local relationship is destroyed, then swing transformer will be affected a lot. And how do we destroy the relationship? Uh, we modify the pixels, right? Then the local distribution will be changed a lot. Very hard to say, we need experiment to that. Maybe the relations introduce kind of robustness. I don't know. Because because both the pixel level information and the relation between the pixels on um, contribute to the final prediction, right? So which means that if we just uh, modify the pixel once, as long as the relations still preserved, which kind of which which might bring the robustness. Maybe you're also right in that suppose we broken the relationship and the original robustness cannot even preserved. Yeah, that is also possible. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, good questions. Is there any other questions? Um, maybe somehow we can introduce uh, operations kind of aggregation in a swing transformer to overcome such kind of attacks. Yeah, uh, because uh, what makes the CNN good is aggregation, right? Pooling. It, it somehow can. Um, you still have aggregation, right? The patch margin uh, is kind of aggregation. Uh, yeah. So I think we can rename this like convolution transformer. 
it's mm. not in transformer. Yeah, I but think yeah. it's kind of a different mm -hmm. implementation, mm -hmm. different design. I think the overall the pyramid structure is just is two zeros, and the relation the, the semantical relation caption to zeros, but I think it's totally different design based on the transformer, mm -hmm. right? And by the way, maybe so, the, my my last question is why this is called a swing? Uh, shift windows. Shift okay. windows. Shift window. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, okay, I see. Yeah, good name. Okay, maybe if there's no further questions, let's call it a day. Let's thanks Kushit again. And I think this really good um, presentation. Okay.